So let's talk about the next section of the nephron that comes after the proximal convoluted tubule, which is called the loop of Henle. So the loop of Henle is the part of the nephron that dips into the medulla and it has two sections, a descending portion and an ascending portion. The loop of Henle is really important in setting up a mechanism called the countercurrent multiplier. So this is really important for the MCAT and you are expected to know what this is and what its purpose is for the MCAT. So the countercurrent multiplier is a mechanism that creates a high osmolarity gradient in the medulla of the nephron. And this is required so that the nephron later on at the later parts, especially at the collecting ducts, can actually concentrate urine. So as the filtrate is going through, we may need to extract as much water as possible from the filtrate. For example, if you are not drinking a lot of water that day, and it is really important for us to be able to reabsorb a lot of water from the filtrate for the medulla to actually have a very high osmolarity. It has a high osmolarity gradient to, to draw water because if water is going away by osmosis, then you need to have a concentration gradient. So the countercurrent multiplier is exactly for that. It's, it sets up this osmolarity gradient so that we can concentrate urine at the collecting ducts. So when I say osmolarity gradient, this is what I'm talking about. So this is the proximal convoluted tubule. Here we have the loop of Henle. It's this entire structure that dips into the medulla. So this is already the medulla of the nephron. And notice how there is an osmolarity gradient here. At the top, the osmolarity is 300, which is pretty much the osmolarity of the filtrate, the osmolarity that's within our cells right now, uh, 300 milliosmoles. But as we go further down into the medulla, the osmolarity jumps up by a lot. So the osmolarity is 1100 at this point. So we, the countercurrent multiplier is the mechanism that sets up this osmolarity gradient. And that's really important for us to be able to concentrate urine and reabsorb as much water as possible from the filtrate later on. Okay, so as I mentioned, the loop of Henle has two parts. So the first part is this descending portion. So the filtrate is going down in this direction, and that's the descending part of the loop of Henle. And then there's the ascending part of the loop of Henle, which is the part that's directly adjacent to it. Now, why do we make that distinction? That's because the descending and ascending loop of Henle actually have very different characteristics. The descending loop of Henle is highly permeable to water. That means that it can reabsorb water from the filtrate and it does so a lot. This means that it causes the filtrate to become very concentrated. A key aspect of, of the descending loop is also that it has low permeability to salt. So it absorbs water, but it doesn't reabsorb salts, which means that the salts are left behind and then the osmolarity of the filtrate as it goes down the descending loop of Henle becomes very high. So the reabsorption of water alone causes the filtrate to become very concentrated. This means high osmolarity. This is what we see here. As the filtrate comes in, its osmolarity is around 300, but as it goes further down into the descending loop of Henle, it becomes very concentrated here at the bottom. It's even as high as 1200. Now the ascending loop of Henle, also called the thick ascending loop of Henle, because as you can see, it's much beefier, it's thicker. It is actually impermeable to water. So it's not able to absorb any water at all, but it's highly permeable to salt. So the opposite actually happens. It causes the filtrate to become very dilute um, and it creates a low osmolarity filtrate for that reason, because the salts are reabsorbed, but the water stays behind. So this may seem a little bit weird, but this is actually required to set up this medullary osmolarity, because recall that the medulla is, you know, the interstitium essentially, that is right outside the nephrons. And so in order for its osmolarity to be set up, then the, it has to work together with the loop of Henle in order for, for this to really occur. So the thick ascending loop of Henle has a high concentration of mitochondria um, to actively pump sodium chloride into the interstitium. So it reabsorbs a lot of sodium chloride. This is what we're seeing here. So a bunch of sodium chloride is getting reabsorbed. The water is not able to be reabsorbed, so it stays here. And then notice how by the time that the filtrate exits the loop of Henle, the osmolarity is super low, even lower than it was before at 100 milliosmoles. So don't worry about necessarily memorizing all these numbers, just have a sense for what's happening as the filtrate goes from the descending to the ascending loop 
shape of Henle. And keep in mind the concept of the countercurrent multiplier, and you should be good to go for the MCAT.